very much. And hello again, radio friends. How in the world are you? Doing all right? Well, this is your friend Bob Cook. I'm glad to be back with you. Praising the Lord, happy in Him. And I trust things are going well for you. If you've struck a rough day, beloved, look up and say, Lord Jesus, see me through this one. And He will. You don't have to have any unsuccessful days when you're trusting your blessed Lord. When He putteth forth His own sheep, He goeth ahead. And and our Lord Jesus will never ask you to go through a day or a night where His presence is not real and where you will not be able to discern the footsteps that have a nail print in them. He goeth ahead. He'll lead you this very day. Trust Him. Trust Him. You and I are just doing a long farewell to the 37th Psalm. We're winding up our thought. And we've been started now in verse 40. The Lord shall help them. I was talking about that when we went off the air the last time, remember? And deliver them. Now, help has to do with helping you, enabling you to finish an an assignment, to complete some work successfully. Then it says, and deliver them. That has to do with rescuing you out of a situation that you can't handle. Oh, life is full of them. And uh, to our sorrow, we have to admit that oftentimes we've tried to handle these situations ourselves and we have failed in the process. Learn with me. I have to learn these lessons over and over again. You'd think I'd know enough, wouldn't you? But I have to keep relearning them just like the rest of us because we're human beings, I guess. Learn the process of committing a situation to your God instead of trying to handle it yourself. You're irritated and the temptation is to blow your stack. Commit yourself to the Lord in faith before the explosion. You're tempted to do or say something wrong. Turn it over to your blessed Lord and let him deliver you. Let him rescue you from the situation. Do you know about this? If you don't understand what I'm saying to you, give it a try. The next time you're faced with a situation you know you can't handle, just turn to your blessed Lord and say, Lord, handle this for me. And see what, he, see what happens. He'll deliver, it says. He rescues you out of an impossible situation, one that you can't handle. Now what happens, actually, is the more you let God rescue you, the stronger you get in your own spiritual life. Because it becomes a fixed habit pattern to let God control And so Paul writes in Romans 15, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. The word believe is commitment. When you keep on committing yourself to the Lord, you get filled with joy and peace, and he says, abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The more you commit yourself to God, the stronger you are in your own spiritual life because you're forming the habit of turning control over to your Lord. He'll deliver them. He'll rescue you out of a situation that you just can't handle. Small thought here. Don't put yourself in the way of being tested. Many a person has the feeling, well, you know, the Lord will take care of me somehow. I'll just, I'll just go blundering on and, and he'll take care of me somehow. Don't get yourself into a bind willingly. Don't put yourself into situations where you know that you're in for trouble. Why should you do that? Learn when to run away. Paul said to Timothy, flee also youthful desires. Timothy was a young man, and he had the testings and temptations of of the very young. Well, some of us are not so young anymore. Uh, I'm on on the shady side of 70, and pushing 80, and 80 is pushing right back. But, you see, the, the tests that we face are different at different stages of life, to be sure. But it's awfully good sense just to detour around things that you know are going to hedge you for trouble. Good idea? Yes, a very good idea. If, however, in the process of living, you're up against a situation you can't handle, call for help. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, the Bible says, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 
This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles, said the psalmist. God is still listening for your call, and he'll answer. The word deliver means rescue. He'll rescue you in a situation where you just can't handle it, but you know he can, and you turn it over to him. Now it says he shall deliver them from the wicked. Now here's a little different a little different slant to that verb. Rescue you not only from situations that you can't handle, but rescue you from the uh, conspiracy and the plans and the finagling and the strategy of those who are opposing God. Oh, there have been so many, so many instances of that. I don't know which one to pick. I think momentarily of our meeting that we had in Cannes, France, down on the Riviera. What a place for a youth conference. I don't know who picked it. But when I got there, I was uh, somewhat uh, aghast at the, at the prospects. But we had a whole week of conference with delegates from all over Europe and some from the Orient and many from the U.S. This would have been back in 1949. And uh, one of the things we faced was that there were, there were, well, the police force was split right down the middle. Half of the police force leaned toward the communist side. The other half was, uh, was sort of regular police. And, uh, you, well, you can imagine the difficulties in getting a permit to do anything because if one said yes, the other said no. And so what we did, uh, realizing that we were up against an impossible situation there with, with people who had no time for the gospel and who were intent upon opposing each other, we had an all-night prayer meeting and prayed about it. And miraculously, there came through a number of permissions, one of which was for Gil Dodds, who at that point was the fastest human being in running a mile indoors, for Gil Dodds to run an exhibition mile along the waterfront. And we got the permission from both the communist police and the regular police. You know, God has a way of doing things if you just trust him. He'll deliver them from the wicked. There are people in this world who are against God. You know that. And they are intent upon opposing anything you may wish to do for God. I guess you know that too, don't you? What's the answer? Call for help. He'll deliver. Call for help. Have a prayer meeting. Have an all-night prayer meeting if necessary. Believe God for something that only he can do. I have the feeling I'm talking to some pastor who is just down in the dumps. You're so blue and so discouraged because everything seems to be going wrong. And you've got people who are against you for no good reason, and then probably some others that do have a good reason, preachers being what they are. We manage, we preachers manage to make enough mistakes to make quite a few people mad at us from time to time. I know that. I know I have anyway. Here I'm talking to somebody who's so blue, so down, so discouraged. My brother, find somebody with whom you can pray and spend some hours before God in prayer, waiting on God. You'd be surprised what he'll do and how he'll change things. Anything I tell you, I've been there. I was ready to quit one church many years ago. So discouraged. And one man came and prayed with me. Yes, he did. He was a plumber. Untutored and unlearned. I don't know if he'd even finished high school, but oh, did he know the Lord. Just a young fellow in his early 30s. And he said to me one day, he showed up just about... I suppose maybe 4.30 or quarter of 5 at the door. And he said, Preacher, what's the matter with you? Well, I said, I'm sort of discouraged. I'm planning to see if I can find some other kind of work. Why, well, he said, have you prayed about it? Well, I said, I prayed with my good wife, but I just don't share my troubles with everybody. He said, I'm going to pray with you. Give me your phone. So he went to the phone, called up his wife. And when she answered, he said, I'm not going to be home for supper. I'm going to pray with the preacher. And he quick hung up before she could say anything. He said, where do you pray in this house? Well, I said, we pray all over, but you can go up in my study. So we went upstairs in the house and knelt down in my little study. 
and he prayed for me, and I prayed, and he prayed, and I prayed. And by and by, the Lord began to touch my heart and do some things that needed doing. And from that point, from that very point, things changed. We had some people moved away. We had a whole gang of new born-again people that moved in. I had a couple of funerals. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, for their honoraria do follow them. You know that. <laughs> the, the whole scene changed, and there was a revival in that congregation. Well, I guess it must have been all right, because we stayed for another three and a half or four years, and everybody cried when we left, so it was all right. You can see God work. If you're discouraged, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Don't talk about it. Don't mumble about it. And meditate about it. Have some prayer. Find somebody who knows the way to the throne of grace and spend some hours before God in prayer. And don't have just a word of prayer. Pray around and then pray around again and pray around again. It's a repeated and continuous period of prayer that breaks through to God. Well, somebody needed that, whoever it is. He'll deliver them from the wicked. If somebody is conspiring against you, you don't have to fight him or her or them. Tell God on them. That's the way to do that. Now it says save them. And that word wraps up all that we've been saying before and makes all of life a continuing miracle. A saved person is one who has found out that God is all he needs and that life is a continuing miracle of the grace of God as you go on trusting him and serving him. He'll save them. Do you know that? Do you know what it is to, to have every day be an adventure with the Lord? Do you? Have, you? have you walked close enough with him to find that as you pray your way through the day, it's just a delightful adventure? He leadeth me, O blessed thought. O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. Pray your way through the day. Let God save you in the sense not simply of delivering you from hell and sending you to heaven. Yes, that's involved, certainly. But let all of life become a, an adventure with your blessed Lord. Mister, before you go to the office, pray. When you get to the office, pray that God will guide you. And then as you, as you answer the phone, pray. When you answer a letter, pray. When you hire or fire or transfer a person in personnel, pray. If you're going to sign a contract, pray first. God has already read the fine print. Pray your way through the day. Let God make life an adventure for you. Well, time is gone, and I've got one more word that I want to come back with the next time we get together, okay? Dear Father, may we trust Thee in a way that will make all of life a continuing miracle, and may we start it today. In Jesus' name I pray this, amen. Till I meet you once again by way of radio, walk with the King today and be a blessing. You've just heard Walk with the King, the ministry of Dr. Robert A. Cook. This program is listener-supported. For more information or to find out how you can help continue this ministry, write to us at Walk with the King, P.O. Box 43, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611. Or visit us on the web at walkwiththeking.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry. This has been broadcast number 7022. Thank you for listening to Walk with the King. Walk with the King.